When talking about major infrastructure projects, I often refer to the why, what and how. I argue that too often we like to focus on the what and the how, which appeal to our natural sense of design and delivery, or to a client's desire to see quick physical results. But we do not spend long enough on the why. Why do we need to build? Why this project over other alternatives? Why is this 70-year solution appropriate or will 20 do? Can we make more efficient use of existing infrastructure? I was therefore delighted when the government announced the establishment of a National Infrastructure Commission to be led by Lord Adonis. Andrew and I had argued for such a commission in a review for the Labour Party. They had accepted the concept, so it's really pleasing to see a Conservative government adopting the idea. We need cross-party support for our long-term infrastructure. Establishing the commission was a bold and positive move by government one which can enable us to reach the essential goal of a long-term infrastructure strategy. I believe that through this new political consensus, we can have an infrastructure revolution, one not seen since our great forebears in the 19th century. Therefore, it's with great pleasure that at the home of infrastructure, I can announce this evening that this institution, in partnership with leading individuals from utility companies, general business, the environmental groups and others, is to lead an advisory group to the Commission as it undertakes its work. We will harness that group's expertise, assisting the Commission to establish a shared long-term vision to 2050. We will begin work on an independent evidence-based infrastructure needs assessment. But how else can we help shape the future of our infrastructure and our profession? I believe that opening our doors to a broader membership will provide for expert views on a range of infrastructure challenges. I would argue we should be prepared to do this in a concerted, planned and continuous programme year in, year out. At the heart of ICE's mission is to qualify and support civil engineers. I know just how valuable membership of the institution is and how much it means to engineers. But there are many other professions who spend their whole careers contributing to the creation of infrastructure who may never seek to qualify as engineers, but who nevertheless would value and benefit from a closer relationship with the institution. It would be a mutual benefit, a benefit for us as an institution as well as a benefit for those people. Infrastructure needs to find ways of using technology in order to reduce its costs, improve its utility, efficiency and increase life cycles. It's interesting to see that the next generation of cars could well be Apple products rather than Ford. Toshiba and Honda are collaborating on smart housing. If the traditional professions and companies in the construction sector do not research, innovate or embrace new ideas coming from other technologies, they may well get left behind. They may find their lunch has been eaten by others, such as Samsung or Siemens. So what can the institution and its members do to encourage more innovation? Well, I'd like to suggest the following. We should make innovation a key value, create awards for exciting and challenging new ideas, including the adoption of technologies from other sectors. Use our website and the internet as an easy way to encourage exchange of knowledge and ideas. Make better use of social media. It will drive more interaction and engagement, particularly amongst our younger members. While candidates are already required to demonstrate innovation to achieve chartered status, there is scope for this to be increased by showcasing how candidates are thinking and using an innovation at work. Perhaps we should even be prepared to recognise innovative thinking, even if it's not being used in a practical sense. For those of us in client organisations, we must recognise that we will be better served by designers and contractors who are given the opportunity to bring forward new ideas and to share with them the risks. I'd like to conclude with a short allegory from one of our great political leaders that I believe illustrates my overriding message this evening. On the night of May the 10th in 1941, one of the last bombs of one of the last serious raids on London destroyed the House of Commons. Winston Churchill's government 
had to subsequently consider whether they should build it up again, where they should build it and how and when. Churchill asked himself and Parliament the why question. He argued to see it restored in all its essentials and glory to its old form. In doing so, Churchill gave us this famous quote. We shape our buildings and afterwards our buildings shape us. We can shape our world by being open-minded, open-minded to every aspect of infrastructure, not just the pure engineering, but the social, economic, and environmental aspects too. We must be open to a broad membership, be open in our dialogue with engineers of all disciplines across the world. We must use every opportunity to inspire young people to join what for me, and I'm sure, sure for all of you, is one of the most enjoyable and satisfying ways of benefiting mankind. If we always start by asking why, it will help us to influence, to innovate and to learn. In doing so, we'll end up shaping ourselves as engineers and ultimately help shape a better world. Thank you.